how you actually track down Richard Nixon, first as a caddy, and then he tracked him down to his office. I got to work for Richard Nixon. I was in St. Louis as an editorial writer, young editorial, one of the youngest in the country at the time, and I was getting though tired of being in an editorial office and writing editorials. I wanted to be out. Everything was going on. I'd taken my you know, trip to be at the Marshall in Washington. I've been down in Philadelphia, Mississippi when the civil rights were, but I wasn't a reporter. I wasn't out there. So I decided after 1964 when Goldwater lost that what I wanted to do was work for a presidential candidate. And I said, I've always liked Nick. My father liked him. He's experienced in foreign policy. So I lined up a meeting in a kitchen in Belleville, Illinois, after Nixon spoke in Belleville. And it was the kitchen of the cartoonist for the Globe Democrat, who was my buddy. And I said, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to show up with my girlfriend. And I'm going to come in, and you introduce me to Nixon in the kitchen. And so he says, OK. So I come in the house, and uh, Don Hesse he said, Pat, Pat, this is former Vice President Nixon. And so I opened up. I said, you know, Mr. Vice President, if you're going to run in 1968, I'd like to get aboard early. And he says, what do you do? And I said, I'm the assistant editorial editor. Gave him that big title of the St. Louis Globe Democrat. He said, I don't want to know your title. I want to know what you do. <laughs> so I told him, what I do is write editorials. He said, what do you write on? I said, we've got two editorial writers, the Post-Dispatch or rival newspaper. They got eight. I write, write on everything. I write city politics, county politics, municipal, state, foreign policy, economics. I write on everything. And so I talked to him for 10 minutes. And just to convince him that I was authentic, I said, Mr. Vice President, we've met before. And he said, when was that? Mm -hmm. I said, well, about, uh, I would say about a dozen years ago, I was a caddy at the Burning Free <laughs> Country Club. <laughs> I'd gone out there with a friend to get a summer job, and we were the last on the caddy bench at Burning Tree. Ike used to come out. We'd watch him tee off at a Secret Service. And it was a great experience. And so we're out there, and we weren't going to get a bag that day, because we're the last guys lined up. And I saw the bag come out of the, of the uh, pro shop. And I said, that's the plaid bag of the vice president, you know? And we were the only two caddies left, my friend Pete Cook and I. You know? And the pro, you know, Max Elbin, he looks over at us and geez, I'm sending these kids out with the vice president. <laughs> so sure enough, he gave, uh, gave Pete Cook the vice president's bag. And I walked to carry the bag of this general 18 holes in the afternoon. And I spent all about four hours with the vice president of the United States. And I told him that story. And, to convince him that I was telling the, the truth and I was not making it up, I described his golf bag to him. <laughs> I named the pro and the assistant pro at Burning Tree. <laughs> so he was convinced. So what happened was, I, you know, he went out to the airport and Don Hess comes into my office and says, the former vice president was asking about you all the way to the airport. <laughs> and I said he was. And so I was waiting for a call or something. And so nothing came for about 10 days. And all of a sudden, I pick up the phone, this familiar voice says, can you come to New York and continue the conversation? So I said, you better call the publisher and ask him if you if it can So the publisher comes into me and says, Richard Nixon just called me. And that's <laughs> so I went to New York, and uh, we went into Nixon's office down at 20 Broad, which is right next to the, Wall Street, the Stock Exchange. And uh, he invited me, and I spent a number of hours there with Rosemary Woods, and he invited me in about 3 o'clock. And he went over one subject after another, quizzing me on this issue, foreign policy, what's going on in the Congress, how do you think the Republicans going to do, what's the conservative movement all about, where are they headed? It just went one after another. And, and during that time, Rose Woods calls me, called into Nixon, and he said, OK, I'll take it. And he said, hello, Senator. And I said, you want me to get out of the office? And he said, no, no, stay here. And I'd been writing about the tax bill Senator Williams was putting up for the Republicans. And Williams was calling Nixon, asking for advice of how the bill should be dealt with. And so I was astounded, you know. I said, look, right, this guy is running the Republican Party from right in here. And so he offered me, at the end of it, he offered me a salary. And he offered me one year. He said, Pat, what we're going to do, we're going to go out and we're going to try to win for the Republican Party and bring them back. They were down to one third of the size of the Democratic Party and the Congress and the governors. He said, because if we don't bring them back, there's not going to be any, any race in, in 1968. We have got to build up the base of the party. It cannot be as you know diminished as it's been. And so sure enough, uh, uh, I said, look, I'm aboard. Can you call the publisher again? 